you might as well just jump straight into it. I've been practicing how to say Dominic Sobosly, I think, for a there few days, well, for about 16 hours now. Um, <laughs> Silence Reds, I mean, and that's, that's a new thing for us. Um, so, yeah, for those who don't know, I'm sure you do by now. David Ornstein reported for The Athletic yesterday afternoon. Liverpool are exploring a move for Dominic Slobosly of RB Leipzig. Liverpool met his camp this week and he's the latest attacker midfielder to be considered. Yeah, so it kind of came from, it felt like there was a lot of talk around Newcastle and then this one, you know, We've been saying for ages, we've been having these conversations before on off air. It's been like, it's the same names being, you know, it's your yeah. Laviers and your, your Graven Birches and your Tarams, et cetera, et cetera. This was a relatively new link that came from one of the most reputable sources that covers football in this country. So it was something that perked up all our attention. I'm guessing it did the same for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. It, when, when, it's, when it's David Ornstein reporting, yeah, I think I don't like to do that kind of thing that some people do with the, the tears of reliability or whatever but I think if, gold medal. I, I think if anyone is, you know if anyone's <laughs> at the top of that tree I think he, it's him isn't it so of course you have to you have to give it the due attention it's a it's an interesting name not just because of the way it's pronounced <laughs> <laughs> um Soba Sly done well done well we had a little we had a little Back sort of a forward. session before we came on air didn't we and you, you've delivered there um it's an interesting name it's an interesting player a type of player I saw your show yesterday that you did I don't know you were in that seat anyway and you were talking about it being a different type of midfield option because it's someone who can play in the front, yeah. front three as well. And he he he's played more really as a forward, as a number ten, than, than as a midfield player. Um, but skill wise and, and what he's got, he's a he's a runner, he's a passer, he's a he's, you know he's creator. I saw Jesse Marsh compared him to David Beckham in the in the way he crosses and passes the ball. I've seen him con- compared a little bit to Kevin De Bruyne, um, which. You know, not too, not too bad names to be um, compared to. What I would say is, he has a clause in his contract which expires tomorrow, so we should have some clarity on what's happening with him by, well, you know, pretty soon because you imagine that you don't want to be getting into a negotiating situation when you've got potential to just get get a deal done. Liverpool have been, uh, you could say. You could say played down, or you could actually say flat out denied. Really, the, the, you know, whichever way you want to want to look at it, the feeling is that Newcastle was where he was going to go. They haven't denied. Well, in fact, I think you can confirm that they've met with his representatives. Um, I don't know if it was this week or, or previously, but they've met with his representatives to, to gauge a situation. I'm not convinced that what came out of that meeting was as encouraging as it could have been from a Liverpool point of view. I think there's still a chance. I mean, if you look at Newcastle, we're linked with Madison, who's just gone to Spurs, shop a slight. Um, potentially is their, their sort of their follow-up to, to Madison, isn't it? Or their, their alternative to Madison. So I think it, it'll be interesting. Next 24, 36 hours, we'll probably see a little bit more developing on that. Um, I'm interested. I, I mean, listen, as a player, and I remember seeing him, he played obviously for, for Salzburg against Liverpool. Um, what was that, 2019? Yeah. That great side that Salzburg had with Haaland, Minamino, Huang. Um, and he was obviously very highly rated at that point. Moving, he was obviously primed to do that, the Leipzig sort of journey that so many have done. He's done pretty well in Leipzig. I think he was one of the top assisters or creators in the Bundesliga last season. Played in the Champions League scored against Manchester City in the Champions League teams like that so he's definitely a player that's on the up and got a chance to potentially make the next step I can see why people would see co- you know it's sort of coincidence in Fabio Cavallo going to, to Leipzig in a pretty pretty early in the window and quite a rapid sort of deal you know is that sort of linked I saw I'm not convinced that that is the case but I can see why people would, would make that connection and that the position that he plays, obviously being able to play probably four positions really across the midfield and the forward line would make it interesting. The only the only thing I would say is, and we could probably go on to the, the Discord question that's below here on the agenda, but it isn't the type of player that we've seen. You know, it's it's a different type of player that Liverpool have been linked with elsewhere. You know, it's it's less of a out and out midfield player that's going to come in, and you could you could make an argument. I think you can make a very fair argument that he. Doesn't his skill set doesn't fix the issues that Liverpool had last season? Liverpool's issues wasn't that they didn't have someone who could cross the ball and, and create chances, and you know they, they, their issue was that they didn't control games well enough. They didn't have a physical presence. They didn't 
you know, get around the pitch often as much, and they didn't have that tactical sort of the legs or the or the, or the tactical nous to sort of dominate midfield. I'm not convinced that Sobersly fixes that, but if they're going to go down a different way, and if we go to the question from Bobby, he says, if, if you think Sobersly signed, is that the biggest indication of a box midfield with, with him and McAllis next season? If he is signed, yes, I would say that's that's true. And I think it also means that Liverpool are just giving themselves a little bit more wiggle room with playing someone off the left, off the right. Well, there's an AFCON thing happening, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. They haven't got anyone really to, to fill in yeah. for Mo Salah, so maybe it's that as well. But, like, going pedalling back before we move on to that one, it feels like, from what you say in there, I'm reading the tea leaves, right, Liverpool's, Liverpool's suggestion is that Newcastle feels more likely than Liverpool. Nothing yeah. Like, like, well, that's what his camp have indicated. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, listen, you... You have to, you have to realise how these things work sometimes. In in the sense that you can, you can get that feeling, and it can change overnight. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it might not even change overnight. You might just be told something that isn't true. But it was a, quite a sort of a, you know, Newcastle really with with, with a team. And I I wonder whether that's moved. You know, that meeting could well be that they've met with the the, the representatives and told, well, actually Newcastle have missed out on Madison. They're gonna they're gonna go there. And sorry guys, you're too late. It could be. You know, the meeting could be, look, we're not paying 70 million euros. Can we do a deal? No, that's not, you know, there's, there's a lot of, the meeting is the meeting and these things happen all the time. You know, scouts, sporting directors, agents have meetings on a daily basis, you know, virtual, in person, on WhatsApp, whatever. Um, but it's what comes from that meeting, really. It's, it's you know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, can we get a deal done? But it's another to actually get the deal done. And I haven't yet had any sort of inkling that Liverpool are sort of making any progress. I, think, I even think David Ornstein's piece, I think there was a line in it which said that Liverpool accepted that a deal would be very difficult to get done. And that was in the you know the actual news piece. So it's it's an exciting name. It's an interesting link, but it's one I think we're gonna have to wait and see. I'm I'm not I'm not prepping the background of yes, put it that way of, yeah. of, of the of the article, but. I would like to because I think he's a good player <laughs> and I think player. he would be a very interesting sign for Liverpool. And you know what? I hope I hope this clip's getting shared on Monday of me looking stupid because I'd like to see Liverpool have this player. Like so you're just reporting what you're, you've been Well, talking. yeah, exactly. You're, you're yeah. And, and listen, I, I, would, I would make no um, bones about the fact that David Ornstein is more better informed than I am on pretty much any story that you wish <laughs> to talk about. If you got him in here, you, I think your uh, your viewership would go through the roof. No, I don't put you off that. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Go, going back to the, the release clause thing, I saw some reports suggesting, and it would even suggest that Newcastle were in the same boat, actually, that both clubs kind of thought that release clause was a bit high. Yeah. And it was almost a case of we're waiting for that to go, yeah. and then we can start Poss the negotiating story, because, yeah, listen, we like him, but we don't like him at 70 million euro. We, we, we like him at 50 million euro. And it, that, that isn't just a Liverpool thing, if it was reported... And I wish I had the guy's name. I've lost it at the minute. But like, both teams are, are suggesting maybe that's the case where we'll wait for Friday, and then it becomes a, a case where maybe you try and do a deal with Leipzig. Yeah. And at the moment, they've, there's no reason for them to sell until at, at this moment in time. I think it is a high, it is a high value. I think if you look at Madison, obviously I know different situations, relegated club and, and contract situations. But if you look at Madison going for forty and and and, and Sobersly going for what you know sixty million pounds plus. I don't think. I don't think there's there's that much of a difference in in the sense of the, the ability. You look at you know Barea being linked to, uh, around around the same price. You look at Tonali uh, at Milan. I think not not dissimilar price. Mason Mount around that 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 sort of thing. You know it, it would be it'd be a big move to make for someone who who is still at the tier below that level. And, I, and listen, as much as I think he's a very good player from what I've seen of him. I don't think he's a guarantee thing. I don't think he's one of them that's like, well, it's obvious that he's just going right to the top. You know, it's not. I don't think it is that case. Not like when De Bruyne, for example, left the Bundesliga, and you thought, well, he is clearly going to become one of the best players around. You know, he's. It's a high, a high fee, and I think you've also got to realize as well that there's just just a lot of midfield sort of plates moving at the moment. Obviously, one of them is going to move quite soon, it looks like, with Declan Rice. Obviously, the Spurs have just got Madison, moves them into a, you know, a different position, albeit they were probably shopping in a different market to a few clubs. You've got Newcastle still to get this Tonali deal done, but looking likely. City are then now being linked with a lot of other types of midfielders. Chelsea are clearly looks like going to move for Caicedo, Mount to United. So there's a lot of sort of bits moving. 
and once those you know once those bits start moving, I think you might just see sort of things snow settle if you like, and Liverpool sort of go right there. We go. We don't need to worry about maybe competition in that area. We don't need to worry about can we convince this player. You know, we can we can settle on a target. Um, but yeah, he's one that you can throw into the the merry-go-round of midfield options. Albeit, to be honest. He's probably more of a wide player, isn't he? Or he has been in his career. You know, he, he would be a convert. He'd, he'd be a convert and midfielder really of Liverpool to to buy him and put him in a. You know, if they were to play him in the right side of a four-three-three, that would be a sort of a bit of a change in his yeah. career. He's more. He's played more of a wide player. I think he was on the left initially at Salzburg and on the right more at Leipzig. Probably as a number ten. So it's still um, there's still a bit of work to do as a to you know to convert him into a midfielder, but. Talent-wise, you know, you look, you've seen him. You see the way he runs with the ball. You see the way he can pass, his delivery, his age. He you know, scores goals. He scores goals. He creates goals. You know, I think I think he was double figures for assists yeah. in the Bundesliga last season. Um, and yeah, he, he's a player of, of of big potential. But at the same time, it is still, if you're talking seventy million euros, you know, that would be a surprisingly high tag, I think, for him. Well, I, I said before about the report, it was from Philip Hines, who works for Sky Sports News in Germany. Right. So that's who it was who said both Liverpool and Newcastle feel that the clause was too expensive at the first step. According to our information, neither the Reds or Magpies made the official offer. They're both dueling for the Hungarian. So yeah, it, it felt like mm. both. It's almost a case of like, we, we like him, but we don't like him 70 million. Like him, and it feels like Newcastle in that as well. Back to the, we, we touched upon earlier, Bobby's question about like. Um, what, what, obviously, if we signed him, it looks like a more attacking number eight. I had another question in the Discord from Jith who said, um, I've got it here, it, 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 and he said uh, along the lines of, in David Ornstein's piece, he mentioned that Slobos like could be more the profile Liverpool are looking for. Is checking that makes sense? Because I was thinking about it before. They want to make some mount. Yeah. And although him and Slobos aren't the same, they are obviously more attacking midfielders. Since then, we've been linked with Kone and Taram and Vega and Gravenberg, who are, you wouldn't call them goal scoring midfielders, any of them. Yeah. So, is, is there a world where it may be Liverpool like one of each because they're still looking for both? I don't know oh, because yeah. I mean, you, you, you will put Mount and Slobber in, in a more similar category to each other, perhaps, yeah. than the, the names that have come out of that. Of, of, well, you, everyone's been reporting since, I suppose. Yeah, but you would also put McAllister in, in that. Yeah, true. That, that, yeah, yeah, that enough, bracket yeah. as well of of mountain, you know, less so sort of slide, but definitely mount. Yeah. You know, someone who's played off the flank, he's played as a number ten, he's played sort of you know deeper. So I think that's the question, isn't it? Is is does McAllister sort of fix that or not fix that? But is he that that type of player? Because I still think you look at Liverpool's options in midfield. There's a lot of football in there. There's a lot of footballers in there, isn't there? You know, Harvey Elliott, Thiago. Curtis Jones, Stefan Bajcetic, Alexis McAllister. Is there a lot of dominant players in there? Are there enough dom players who who can go away to Brentford or you know wherever next season? And when you have to earn the right to play, you can stand up to the physical the physical challenge of it. I think there's a big question over it personally. Yeah, yeah. A huge question over well, we it. Saw last week, you know, Trent, yeah. uh, Trent's another one. You know, you can put Trent in the footballers category if you, if you want to put him as a midfielder. Is he a player that you know you're going to be able to just say, look, we're under pressure here. We're going to have to ride the storm for 15 minutes. Just, just stay in the game, and then we can sort of try and play. I don't, I don't believe so. Does Sobosly change that? Probably not. Um, Taram. I believe, I mean, you know, listen, Taram is a little bit, there's a bit of a, a sort of a, a contradiction with him because he's obviously a big physical unit, but the, the, the question is sort of, or the, the, the criticism is a little bit, does he use that yep. enough sometimes defensively? That would be the aim for Liverpool to try and teach him to do that. Gravenberg, a little bit similar, um, you know, really good sort of press resistant. You know, we'll, we're going to talk about Lavia, for example, but he he's a bit more, they're more, they're more footballers than size but, but they have got size as well. So I'm not... I think it's interesting to see what Liverpool will do because if they were to sign three sort of attacking midfield players or attack-minded midfield players, you know, let's say they've signed Taram and Sobosley, you know, OK, we're asking a lot, but let's say they sign those two. Does that does that fix the sort of the, the, the defensive issues that Liverpool had in the midfield? Because that's what it was. I don't think it was a... It, it wasn't a case of they weren't creating enough or they weren't scoring enough or all those things. It was a case of 
they were too easy to play against. They were they were far too easy to play through, play against, to get the better of, to to to, to knock out of their stride physically. Do they fix those? Possibly, but I still think there's there's a question that you know you'd, I, I think a lot of people would like to see Liverpool be stronger in midfield next season, as opposed to just adding in a few more footballers. But you know. You can never have too many good players in your squad. Yeah, right. we'll keep an eye on the slower side stuff, like Neil said. There, it could, it could advance pretty quickly. We'll know by Friday pretty much about the release clause stuff, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, it feels like Newcastle might have a little edge on that one Maybe at, at this moment in time. Maybe. But obviously, things can change. Yeah, I mean, they've got Champions League football as well. You know, it, it feels it's yeah. ridiculous to be saying this after you know, twelve months ago. You'd never, you know. But Newcastle have got the Champions League carrot. He's obviously he's in the Champions League at the moment, played in it with Leipzig. He's qualified for it next season. You know. You might that might be that might be what came out of the meeting. You know the meeting could have been he wants to play in the Champions League, and that's you know I think Jürgen's pretty much you know said it repeatedly as needed. The second someone sort of says that, it's the button gets pressed, doesn't it? But we'll see. But it's it, it's probably it's probably just another example for Liverpool fans in a negative way of just how hard it's becoming to sort of strengthen your squad. You know. You, they're, they're having to Liverpool have always had to sort of you know get a lot of decisions right now they're having to do it whilst other contenders are suddenly emerging you know Arsenal are suddenly back on the, on the, on the pitch and you know spending a lot of money and getting players in Newcastle are now suddenly making steps you know probably ahead of schedule in terms of getting in the Champions League Manchester United are, look like they're starting to become a little bit more savvy and, and hard nosed rather than just you know going after names and things like that so yeah it's um it's a it's a challenge, but probably of all the sort of people you'd want at the helm when you've got that kind of challenge, probably Jurgen Klopp to create that sort of togetherness and you know that sort of underdog mentality. Maybe he could be the ideal guy. Yeah, and I have to say we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that one and say if anything else breaks, I'm sure we'll have it here <coughs> as soon as we can. Hey guys, that was a clip from our journal inside show twice a week over on Red Men Plus. We have Neil Jones in discussing the latest Liverpool news and rumours. If you want to go and check out that entire show, including talk about Nat Phillips, Reese Williams, Romeo Lavia, Gabby Vega, and of course Slobber's Light, then go over to redmenplus.com, sign up and check it out. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Have you had a chance to watch episode one of Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, our brand new documentary series? If you haven't, check out episode one right now on YouTube. And if you want to watch the full series, head to redmenplus.com. Com, episode two, episode three, and full interviews with all of the incredible contributors, including Liverpool skipper Jordan Henderson. It will be there for you. Go over, fill your summer with Bobby Happiness, with Bobby Firmino, Best in the World, our exclusive documentary series.